So we're going to be unboxing or unpacking the legendary uh, hero deck. So I had an issue with my camera during the original unboxing. So it just basically made the footage kind of unusable. So what we can do is just kind of reshoot the video. Um, so I've already kind of unpackaged it. You get three decks in this set, the legendary heroes deck. I got this from uh, Unicorn Cards who had a good price on it. It's not an affiliate link or an affiliation. It's just they had, you know, the cheapest price I could find this at £26. Um, and yeah, it's uh, it's pretty decent. I think this deck is probably the best one, as my friend would say. It's nasty work. Um, so I'll go through each one of the cards, and um, yeah, I'll do an overall rating out of ten. I've also got a um, junk synchron deck, um, should I say junk warrior deck from two thousand and eight that I purchased recently as well. So we'll take um, we'll take a little look at that. But for now, we're going to look at the coral dragon. So this one's a 6-star Synchro Monster, Synchro and Tuna. So you can use this one to Synchro Summon another card. But once per turn, discard one card, target one card your opponent controls, destroy it. If you Synchro Summoned, um, see, if this Synchro card is sent from the field to the graveyard, you can draw one card. You can use this card's effect once per turn. And if this card had, a, if this was a quick effect, um, you know, the destroy one card, it would be nasty work. But um, for now, it's not it's not too bad. Coral Dragon, so pretty good. We've got a Hollow Sky Dragon. So this one, the um, it's got a paragraph on it. So I'll just, I'll just take it out of shot, and you can look at this amazing Hollow Dark Hole. So for this card, if this card, it, if this card is Synchro Summoned, it gains 800 attack points for each card you currently um, control in your hand. When this card you control is destroyed by your opponent's card effect and sent to your graveyard, if all the monsters that were used to, for the synchro summoning of this card are in the graveyard, special summon all of them, but their effects are negated. You can only use the effect of Ascension Sky Dragon once per turn. So, for example, if you um, if you synchro summon this card, if you can figure out a way to dest also destroy this card at the end of the turn, uh, you can bring back the monsters used to synchro summon it, and then you can do some major damage. Or if this card's destroyed when you synchro summon it you can um, uh, bring back some of the uh, material monsters. We've got this really nice hollow dark hole there, beautiful stuff there uh, from the, the Mandamat Konami. We've got a, a hollow, uh, and again, you're going to have to forgive me for the pronunciations because these are no, um, sort of Nordic uh, names or Scandinavian names. Tangus of the Nordic Beasts. So if this card is destroyed by battle and sent to the graveyard, special summon two Nordic Beast tokens. Um, so not bad. Um, really good defensive card. You've got, I think, what's meant to be the star of this deck is this Link Summon card, which is new, or relatively new. Um, let's see, I'll get a closer look at this one and I'll read out its effect. Um, it's the last hollow in this set. It's Gulvig of the Nordic Ascend Ascendant. So if this card is Link Summoned, you can banish up to three cards from your hand or field. And if you do special summon that many Nordic monsters from your deck in defense position, also, for the rest of this turn, you cannot special summon monsters except Aesir monsters, nor normal summon set of monsters. You can only use the effect of Gulvig of the Nordic Ascent once per turn. When this card points to an, Ace, uh, an Aesir monster, your opponent cannot target that monster with card effects. Also, monsters you control cannot be tar uh, cannot target this card for attacks. Um, so yeah, pretty nasty, um, pretty uh, not, not a very nice card. It's only got one link there, so you can only point it at a bottom left slot. Uh, link summoning is a weird mechanic, you know. Um, you got to remember what the meta is now. It's hand traps, and hand traps, hand traps, and link monsters, which everyone should really despise. Um, you've got this one, Scrap Dragon. So uh, once per turn, you can target one card your opponent control, uh, one card you control, one card your opponent controls. Destroy them. When this card in your possession is destroyed by your opponent's card effect and sent to your graveyard, you target one non-synchro scrap monster in your graveyard. Special summon that target. Um, so again, not bad. Um, do you know, we'll go through these two at the end. These cards are nasty work. Um, whoops, I've dropped a Nordic, uh, a Nordic god there, I think. Or maybe I didn't. So we've got here Leo, the Keeper of the Sacred Tree. Um, so this one's not too bad. Um, one Tuna Monster plus one non-Tuna Monster. Your opponent cannot target this card with card effects, except during main phase two. So this one's okay, but with 3,100 attack points, um, it's pretty good. If you're playing just structured decks, You've got this one, Odin, Father of the Aesir, so this guy is nasty. Uh, once per turn, you can make this card unaffected by spell or trap card effects until the end of this turn, so it only works during your turn. Once per turn during the end phase, if this card you control was destroyed by your opponent's card and sent to uh, the graveyard this turn, you can banish one Nordic Ascendant Tuna monster in your graveyard, special summon this card. 
when summoned this way, you can draw one card. So if you have a load of Nordic, um, let's see, if you have a load of Nordic Ascendant Tuna monsters in your graveyard, um, and your opponent doesn't have any banishment cards, this guy is going to be a pain. And with 4,000 attack points, he's no joke. Um, that's a serious card. You got Loki, Lord of the Aesir, so you've got um, his effect is once per turn when your opponent activates a spell or trap card during the battle phase, you can negate the activation and if you do, destroy it. Once per turn during the end phase, if this face-up card you controlled was destroyed by your opponent's card and sent to the graveyard, you can banish one Nordic Alpha Tuna monster from your graveyard, special summon this card. So they've got different kinds of Tuna monsters I think they need to be brought back. You've got Thor, Lord of the Aesir, and there are many different depictions of Thor in kind of pop culture. This guy is looking, he's looking jacked. Um, so you've got uh, one Nordic Beast plus two, uh, plus two non-tuna monsters. Once per turn, you can negate the effects of all face-up monsters your opponent currently controls until the end of this turn. Oh, that's gnarly. Ass. Whoops, drop my light. Hold up. That is one gnarly card there. Um, let's see, once per turn, during the end phase, if this face-up card was destroyed by your opponent's card and sent to your graveyard, banish one Nordic Beast Tuna monster from your graveyard, special summon this card. So there is almost a limit on the amount you can you know, kind of spam these card effects. I know it's a bit difficult for you guys to uh, maybe read those because just the way the lighting is, it, it's a bit difficult for me to do it because I'm just recording these at home. Um, but yeah, you've got Solemn Authority, so there's a different set of Solemn cards. So activate this by targeting one AC monster you control. It cannot be destroyed by card effects. While this card is on the field, send this card to the graveyard during your second standby phase. So you'll get some good protection given that all of the Nordic cards, or at least some of these um, Nordic synchro cards, Loki, Thor, Odin, these are Aesir monsters. So this will be protected by this card. Is there only one? Let's see, targeting one Aesir monster you control. Um, so you can protect one of the Aesir cards. So pretty good. You've got Nordic Relic, um, Medjing, uh, Medjing Yord. So you target one uh, Ace, uh, Aesir or Nordic monster you control, its attack and defense become double its original attack until the end of this turn, but it cannot attack your opponent directly. So if you use this on, for example, Odin, you can make his attack points become 8,000, which is pretty wild, especially if the other person is trying to attack you. Um, so you've got two of these Nordic Relic um, gun, gun, Gunnir cards. Banish one Aesir or Nordic monster you control, then target one card in the field, destroy it, also, during the second phase after this card's activation, return the monster you banished to activate the card um, to activate this card to the fa to the, fa the field in face of a tap position. So that's a bit of a weird one. Um, during the second phase after activation, return the monster you banished to activate this card to the field. So essentially, you get your monster back, um, the one you banished to um, negate a. Let's see. Let's have another look at that card quickly. Let's see. Target one card in the field. So yeah, you can destroy a card and um, banish one of yours, but get it back. This card is really good. Uh, it's one of my favorites. I've got it in my actual deck. Um, target one face up monster on the field that uh, destroyed a monster by battle this turn. Destroy it. Card effects cannot be uh, activated in response to this card's activation. Nordic Relic um, Levantine. You get two of those, so pretty good. Let's see, Nordic Relic Brigginsman. Let's have a look. Uh, target one face-up monster you control and one face-up monster your opponent controls. The attack of the first target becomes equal to the original attack of the second target. So you can use this to protect one of your weaker monsters, I think. Uh, pretty good. Mm. So yeah, you can use that to take out one of your opponent's stronger monsters. Um, Genefir, the Feathers of Fenrir. Let's see. Target, add one Nordic monster from your deck to your hands. So pretty good. Um... Um, it gives you some extra speed uh, for your game, as long as you're not playing Ash Blossoms, because everyone hates Ash. Mystical Space Typhoon, destroy one spell or trap card in the field. That one's, uh, that one's a classic. Giant True, or oh, Hey True Nade. Uh, return all all set spells and trap cards to the um, to the hand. So again, that's a bit different um, compared to Giant True Nade. So it's interesting. Soul Charge. Let's have a look at this one. Target any number of monsters in your graveyard, special summon them, and if you do, lose 1,000 uh, life points for each monster, special summon this way. You cannot conduct your battle phase this turn. The card was activated. You can only activate one soul charge per turn. So I think this is a card Raphael used against Yugi. Um, but yeah, in order to freeze monsters from the graveyard before, uh, because of the Seal of Warwick Alcos. Monster Reborn, classic. Um, I was always mixed. I didn't know if you could use Monster Reborn on Synchro cards and Fusion cards and stuff, because it's... 
The game's always been weird about that, but target one monster in either player's graveyard special summon it. Decent. Um, let's see, Forbidden Dress. Um, target one face-up monster on the field. Until the end of this turn, the target loses 600 attack, but cannot be targeted or destroyed by other card effects. Uh, decent. Oh, you can hear people in the background. Target one face-up monster on the field. Until the end of this turn, that target loses 800 attack, but it's unaffected by the effects of other spells and traps. So Forbidden Lance, Forbidden Dress, Forbidden Chalice. Um, everything's forbidden now. Target one face up monster in the field until the end of this turn. That target gains 400 attack, but its effects are negated. So you have a lot of these um, these forbidden cards here. Very uh, good quick plays. Um, as far as structure deck goes, anyway, uh, structure deck goes. March towards Rag Ragnarok. It's target one Aesir monster you control until the end of this turn. Its effects are negated. Also, face up trap, uh, face up monsters uh, is unaffected. <laughs> Was well, so that face-up monster is unaffected by the effects of other spell cards? So you can negate your own monster's effects, but protect it. So it's again these are high-risk strategies, but given the the attack points of these Nordic monsters, um, you know the synchros, it's not that bad. Because the only way you're really going to take some of these out is by um, using effects. So equip only to an Aesir or Nordic monster. It gains 800 attack. If this face-up card on the field is destroyed by card effect, you can add one Nordic relic from your uh, deck to your hand. So that's you can add another one of these. Uh, cards if you want to. You got the Nordic Light, which is a field spell. So have a look at this one. Nordic monster in the field cannot be destroyed by battle. If this card on the field is destroyed, destroy all Nordic monsters on the field. Which again, that's a real double-edged sword. There, um, it's not great. Here you got Tier, the Nordic uh, Tier of the Nordic Champions. Um, let's have a quick look at his card. Your opponent cannot target Nordic monsters for attacks except tier of the Nordic champions. If there is no other Nordic monster in the field, destroy this card. So it's got 2,000 attack. It's not bad. So you can summon it fairly quickly. But you do need another Nordic card on the field in order for you to actually use him. But four star. So if you can, you can use him to buy some time. Thanidus of the Nordic Ascendant. So you tune a monster four star. For a Synchro monster, you can substitute this card for any one Nordic Tuna card. If this card is used as a Synchro material, all other Synchro monsters must be Nordic monsters. Once per turn, you can send one Nordic monster from your deck to your graveyard. This card's level becomes the level of that card until the end of the turn. So if you've got anything strong in your deck, you can use this as a kind of substitute in terms of level. Uh, so if you need a higher level or even a lower level, this card could come in quite handy, depending on what your strategies are. You've got Valkyrie of the Nordic Ascendant. So let's see. This card is not treated as a Valkyrie card, which would be frustrating if you wanted to use the banishment effects of the other cards. When this card is normal summoned, you, if your opponent controls a monster and you control no other cards, you can banish two Nordic monsters from your hand, special summon two Eigenhard uh, tokens uh, in defense position. So uh, I wonder, you know, two level four tokens plus this card would give you 10 stars, so maybe you can do something with that. You'd have to play around, or I'd have to play around with these to really know how good these are. You know, and probably have to watch a YouTube video, I'll be honest. Once per turn, at the start of your standby phase, if you control a Nordic monster and this card is in your graveyard, you can send one spell card from your hand to the graveyard, special summon this card. So that's Mimir, the, uh, meant to be the, the most intelligent man in, uh, I think, Norse law. I'm not sure. Um, my Nordic lore is, um, is not great. Mara of the Nordic Alpha. So I think this one was meant to be decent. So a Tuna Monster, um, when using this card as a Synchro uh, material, the other Synchro materials must be two Nordic Monsters in your hand. So again, you can summon this card, and if you've got the, two, the right Nordic Monsters in your hand, um, you, can, you can use this one pretty easily. Um, it just really, as long as you've got the other two in your hand, it's pretty, uh, pretty easy. And if you look at you know, the Nordic Monsters that we've seen already, you could use, for example, Tyr. Tyr would be one you could use. Um, and you just need one more after that. And you could uh, pull off a Synchro just straight off the bat, just by summoning one card. Let's see, here we've got um, Savalataf, the of the Nordic Alifa. So when this card is normal summon, you can target one Nordic monster in your graveyard, add that target to your hand. Um, it's pretty good as a 5 star though, which is frustrating, but again, not bad. Tuna monster, um, so if you, you can use that one to get something decent out of the grave, if you've got it. You've got um, a low staff of the Nordic Alifa. See, so... Uh, when this card is normal summoned, you can target one face-up monster you control, except this card. Special summon one uh, Nordic monster from your hand with a level less 
or equal to that face-up levels monster. So tag one face-up monster. So you need another monster on the field, really, um, to special summon another one, uh, another card. But um, if you've got, you know, weaker monsters in your hand or strong monsters on your field, that's not too bad. You get two of those. Um, not a tuner, so um, you'd be hoping <laughs> you can special summon a tuner. Something, um, not even this, this is not a tuner either. You know, you, after you normal summon this card, you can uh, normal summon one Nordic monster from your... Uh, you can special. You can normal summon one Nordic monster during your main phase this turn, in addition to your normal summon. So it's kind of like double summon if you if it was a monster. If this card face up on the field and sent to the graveyard, target one Nordic monster, a Nordic relic card in your graveyard, add that target to hand. So you can use this one to bring back one of your spell cards or trap cards uh, from the grave if you use its effect. So again, not bad. We've got the big horse. I've got one of these. It's some roided up horse there. Um, Let's see, Tuna, if this if your opponent controls a Synchro monster and you control no monsters, you can special summon this from your hand, which is it's decent, um, situational though, um, really wouldn't work now because not, you know, I don't think a lot of people play Synchros that much, most people play like Link or Xyz, here you've got Gimme of the Nordic Beasts, you got, if this card uh, battles a level 4 or lower monster after damage calculation, you can return that monster to the hand. So it's it's okay. 1900 points. It kind of reminds me of... Um, God, I can't remember what card it is. It's got 1850 defense points, and um, any card that battles it gets sent back to the opponent's hand. It's a really good card, to be fair. Um, you can use it to <laughs> frustrate people to no end, given the lack of um, four-star cards with 2000 or more than 1850 attack points. Um, here you've got Tans Grosse of the Nordic Beast, so uh, let's have a look at this one. We're almost through this one. When a monster you control is destroyed by battle and sent to the graveyard, you can special summon this card from your hand once per turn. When this card attacks defense, uh, th when this defense position card on the field is changed to face up attack position, you can special summon one uh, Nordic Beast monster from your deck to your hand in defense position, except um, this card. So. When a monster you control is destroyed by battle and sent to the graveyard, special summon this card from your hand once per turn when this... So what you want to do really is, if one of your monsters get destroyed, uh, you want to special summon this card from your hand in defense mode, and then um, change it to attack mode, and then you can special summon one Nordic Beast monster from your deck in defense position. Um, and then you could use that one to just grab a tuna straight out from your deck, which is... Um, yeah, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. Respect that one. We've seen this one already. And this this is where this is where the frustration comes in, like Konami. What this this is nasty work from Konami here. Here you've got uh, Beelzeus of the Diabolic Dragon. So one one dark tuna monster plus uh two non-tuna monsters. So this card is four thousand four hundred attack, right? Cannot be destroyed by battle or card effect, so you're gonna have to banish it, or you're gonna have to get something stronger to keep attacking it if it's in attack mode, right? Target one monster your opponent controls, um, you see, other monsters you control cannot attack. Once per turn, target one monster your opponent controls. Any battle damage your opponent takes, uh, any battle damage your opponent takes from attacks involving this card, is halved. Also, change that monster attack to zero. And if you do gain life points to his original attack, so what you do is you summon this card, right? Nasty work card, right? Target one monster your opponent controls. Any damage your opponent takes from that card is halved, but that monster's attack points are changed to zero, and then you gain life points equal to its original attack. Like, how do you... Like, without banishing this card, this card would genuinely be a nightmare to beat. And then you've got this card, but the junior version of it, the child version from BLZs of the Diabolic Dragons. Um, you've got this one, one Dark Tuna plus one non-tuna monster, uh, one non-tuna monster. Cannot be destroyed by battle or card effects. If you take damage from an attack involving this card, or from an opponent's effect, this card gains attack equal to the damage you took. So even if your opponent tries to attack you, right, and they do effect damage or battle damage, this card gets even stronger. This card, this card's not as not as bad. Um, I think this one's nasty though. This this one's nasty, absolute disgusting card. Konami, why'd you do this to the people? Um, but yeah, overall, I would say, given the fact that I've looked at the other two decks when I did the unboxing. This deck is probably, as far as structure decks go, and I'm a guy who's used quite a few of them, so probably, depending on how hard it is to summon some of these cards, probably a 7, 7.5 out of 10, I'd say. Uh, but anyways, let me know what you think in the comments on this one, and I'll see you guys in the next video.